So this is a pretty popular style, or is it becoming more popular? As I'm seeing more and more fragrances combining neroli orange blossom with sweet vanillic and sugary marshmallow notes. Hence the case with Memo's Sintra, a recent launch, and I'm going to tell you all about this fragrance. I'm enjoying it. I really love this combination, and I'm also going to tell you about four, maybe five other fragrances that are similar to this. Not identical, but similar style, focusing on neroli orange blossom and uh, sweet notes like vanilla, sugar, caramel, and uh, of course marshmallows. So if you're curious to learn about these, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Today I'm talking about Memo Paris's Sintra. Really gorgeous bottle, as you can see. I never got to go to Sintra. It's a little castle city that looks like a fairy tale city uh, outside of Lisbon in Portugal. Next time I go there, I will visit. But this is a beautiful label, as you can see here. Uh, I was very curious about this, and when I read the notes, I, got, I thought, okay, this is going in that direction of fragrances that I, I love. Uh, the orange blossom and the neroli, or one or the other, or both. Sometimes they only use one note, and they combine it with sweet notes. Like in this case, it's marshmallow, they have vanilla, and then it turns out to be like a, almost like a dessert with the citrus floral note in it, which is really heavenly. And it's something I grew up eating anyway. In the Middle East, we use orange blossom water in a lot of desserts, and it's a great flavoring addition. It's floral, it's citrusy, and it tastes uh, fabulous. And this is almost like eating a dessert. So I'll tell you all about Memo Paris Sintra today. And I'm also gonna tell you about four fragrances I have here, one additional that are also similar in this style. But before I get to the fragrances and the review for Sintra, if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways so memo paris sintra is a 2020 launch the bottle was sent to me for the specific review the opinions all my own but i was very very curious about this one because i love the combination of those notes orange blossom or neroli or both combined with sweet notes like vanilla, sugar, caramel, marshmallows. It turns out to be a very, very beautiful dessert I've grown up eating. It's a dessert that, I mean, it's a note, like the orange blossom is, you know, combined with uh, pastries and other types of desserts in, in the Middle East. But there's also, you combine, combine it with vanilla ice cream and sprinkle it with pistachio. Really, and it's an absolute delicious dessert. I love eating it. And that's why I like the smell, even though I think it leans a little feminine, the style in general, uh, it's a great smell because I just love uh, the way the, the smell is. A sweet, vanilla, creamy notes, uh, of course, with uh, the beautiful uh, citrus uh, floral notes. So this is a 2020 launch. 75 ml bottle is 300. It's considered an oriental floral fragrance. The perfumer, once again, is Alienor Massenet. It's an eau de parfum concentration. For the notes, what we have are marshmallow, orange blossom absolute, Petigran, Madagascan, Vanilla Absolute, and Musk. Not a lot of notes are credited for this one. And basically, you experience all the notes uh, that I read to you. For me, the Vanilla and the Orange Blossom Absolute are pretty much what's running the show. Uh, those two combined together is basically the idea that I, that I really like about this, the Vanilla notes and the Orange Blossom notes. But with this one, you have two other notes that come in that are really uh, uh, kind of like stepping up. They're, they're part of the, the fragrance. You definitely experience them. Pettigran gives it a very green touch. It's a greenish touch uh, running throughout and it's, it complements Orange Blossom perfectly because after all, Orange Blossom and Pettigrain come from the same tree. So they kind of have similar, uh, you know, smells to them, or but uh, they're in a different direction. Pettigrain for me goes bitter green woody. Orange Blossom goes very uh, citrus floral, uh, wh white flower kind of um, a direction. But they really do complement one another. But in this case, there's also the addition of marshmallows. So in the end, this has a very fluffy uh, consistency and uh, wearability 
stability. So you're experiencing this like very, very light and airy, uh, you know, uh, fragrance combining these beautiful notes that really, really do work wonderfully together. And it makes for a very, very delicious um, fragrance experience. Add in the notes also uh, musk. It, it's quite musky for me. You've got one, a winner of a fragrance. Now for me, when I'm wearing this fragrance, I do experience some other notes as well. There are some caramelly touches. It does sweeten and sweeten and sweeten up. But for me, compared to the other fragrance I'm going to talk to you about, and one obvious fragrance I've spoken a lot about, this doesn't go full on gourmand. For me, that pedigree note, the bitterness, the greenness, the woodiness tones down the um, the uh, sweetness. Even though I get a kind of a caramelly quality in here, it, it's almost like diet. It's like sugar free. Uh, you get the caramelly consistency. Uh, maybe it's just an accord created with the notes like the marshmallow, the vanilla absolute. But I do get it. But it's not like sickly sweet, sugary, tooth rottingly sweet kind of a experience. Don't get me wrong though, this is a sweet fragrance, but that pedigree note, the greenness, and as I said, the bitterness, the greenness, the woodiness is toning down the sweet qualities. So in the end, for me, this one actually, it's a nice balance. You have a nice balance of floral touches because when you put the flower, that, the flowers there, the orange blossom, those are pretty much the dominant note, almost equally balance with vanilla absolute. So when that marshmallow comes in, you also have another balance of the pedigree. So in the end, you're experiencing them almost equally, equal amounts of orange blossom and pedigree, and then down from that, equal amounts of the marshmallow and the pedigree. The combination really works great. As I said, I do get a kind of a caramelly quality with this one, slightly buttery, slightly smooth and uh, almost ambery in the end, but it's a really, really gorgeous composition. Now for guys, I think this might lean feminine. If you like fragrances like uh, By Killian's Love or the few other fragrances I'm gonna talk to you about today, like Batito de Ali from Profuma Roma, uh, um, there's a few others as well. If you like those, you might like this one, but again, I think a lot of these fragrances might leave, lean feminine because that orange blossom note is really, really prominent. And it is a flower after all. It's a great flower. Uh, it's really, really stand out and smells excellent. This will make a great fragrance for fall. I think it's a great season to launch this fragrance, but I also feel like it's a great winter and uh, spring fragrance as well, especially during the spring months is when we have the orange blossoms and the neroli blooming. Most of the time, I think they're kind of they bloom throughout the year, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that part, but uh, generally I see a lot of the blossoms, the orange blossoms blooming during the uh, spring months, which I think this will be perfect for. It might get a little cloying for uh, summertime, but in the end I think there's no real rules. If you like it and you can control your sprays, you can wear it. But I think this is a winner. I think this house keeps impressing me with the quality of their fragrances. They have some really, really great fragrances. They have some great labels as well. The only negative is they are on the pricier side, uh, 75 ml for 300 but sometimes you got to think, okay, does it smell great? If it smells great enough for me, I'm going to get it. If it doesn't smell gr great enough for me, I'm going to pass it. So I highly recommend you guys get a sample to test it out or sample in a store to smell it because I think you're going to like this one a lot. Now I'm going to move on to the fragrances that smell like Sintra. A lot of you know about these fragrances and I've spoken a lot about this particular one. Recently I did a video comparing this one with... Uh, this particular fragrance. This is by Killian's Love and this is Neroli Blanc Intense from um, Apes de la Fleur de Orangere. So for me, the four fragrances I'm going to discuss with you today, plus I'm going to do one mention of one as I do not own it, are all in the same ballpark. It's basically combining either orange blossom or neroli or the two together with sweet notes like vanilla, caramel, sugar, marshmallows. So Love combines caramel, marshmallows, vanilla, orange, neroli, honeysuckle, jasmine, rose, and musk. So this one actually has gone through a little bit of a change for me. Um, it seems to have gotten a little lighter. Um, the juice color has gone lighter as well. But when I compare it to Sintra, they're kind of in that same ballpark as I said, but what's really running this one and the really, really standout note is that pedigree, which is very, very green and bitter and woody, doesn't appear here. So for me, 
This goes more gourmand than uh, Sintra does. But again, it's that same style, same idea, marshmallows with orange blossom and things like that. In the end, both of them are delicious, but I'm really digging Sintra lately. So um, you've got to, you know, compare them side by side or um, get samples to test them all out because in the end, again, as I said, they're kind of in the same ballpark, but you'll smell one, you'll think it's too sweet, you'll smell one, you think it's perfect, another one is too light, another one is too strong, all that good stuff. So I highly recommend you test these out and sample them and then see which one works best for you. But I love both, don't get me wrong. I just don't know what's going on with the uh, love. It seems to have gotten lighter and the intensity of this one I really, really am enjoying. So that's love. Next, it's Apes de la Fleur d'Oranger Neroli Blanc. I have a video about this fragrance and I compare it to Love by Killian in that video. Go catch it as I do have a, um, a discount code for this fragrance in that video as well. But when I compare Sintra to uh, Apes de la Fleur d'Oranger, I get a little more uh, closer quality, like a, a, a little more similarities, but then again, I don't have the marshmallow in here. In the end, there's vanilla and fruits, but no marshmallow. So it reminds me of this, and then it just doesn't remind me of it. So in the end, I think Sintra is closer to Apes de la Florida Orangere, but this is even less sweet than this. This one has the vanilla and the uh, marshmallows, but this one seems a little more... Uh, Focusing on the orange blossom, less sweet notes, even though they're they're in there. So it's more orange blossom with this one. It's more uh, fruits, and then there's also like notes like jasmine and bergamot and sandalwood. So you should compare them, as I said, side by side to see which one works best for you, or you know pick up notes if you can. I mean pick up samples if you can to test them out. Again, they're in that same family, but I find this one to be the least sweet. Uh, with sweet notes, but sweet with the orange blossom, because the orange blossom can be sweet, uh, obviously, it's a flower. So that's Apes de la Fleur d'Oranger Neroli Blanc Intense. Uh, another one I want to uh, have you know about that I also find in this similar ballpark of fragrances is Batito de Ali from the House of or um, Profumum Roma. Now this one, um, goes in a different direction even further. In the end, it's orange flower, it's myrrh, it's vanilla, but they've thrown in cacao, so it does this chocolatey touch. Chocolate and orange flower do, does work together. It adds another layer, a, a twist that I like, but in the end, it's vanillic. It's that same idea combining the sweet vanilla with the orange blossom or orange flower. But here in this case, they've also thrown in myrrh, which is a resin. There are some sweet touches in there. And I think with the cacao and the coconut, I forgot to mention coconut because there is definitely a coconutty touch here. It does go in a different direction. It has an, its own signature smell, but that cacao changes that typical smell of the other three that I've, um, I've spoken, about, spoken about today because it does add another layer of a smell. It's different a little bit, but in the end, when you really focus in on the smells, it's similar idea, just added an extra note to take it into a different direction, and that being the cacao. The coconut adds a slight milkiness to this, so that doesn't really change the smell too much. Uh, and of course, the other fragrances do have a little bit of a milkiness to begin with, with some of the, the notes like the vanilla and the, the, the caramel and things like that. But with this one, the coconut doesn't do much. It's just a cacao that changes directions a bit. So that's Batito de Ali. I find these all to be uh, in the same sort of ballpark with styles. Again, they're not identical, but they're similar, and you can check them out if you like them. Uh, another one that I have is from a house called Eric Buderbau Florals, or EB Florals, and this is orange, Oud Orange Flower. So this one, to me, once again, uh, it's more like this, not as gourmand as the others. Um, I guess I had it wrong way, not like this. So it's not as gourmand as others. It's also a little more, um, it's, it doesn't seem like dense. It, it's not overly dense. But with this one, you have oud, and the oud doesn't really pop for me too much. It's there. I almost feel like everything else outside of the oud is uh, flowers and vanilla and things like that. But everything, uh, you know, with the oud is so dense, uh, it, all, all the other notes kind of like, 
lift it up and lighten it up so it's easier to wear. But with this one, you have lots of oud, orange flower, vanilla, frangipani, patchouli, oak moss, champaka flower, vetiver, and bergamot. In the end, it's really, really lovely. When you first smell it out of the bottle, it doesn't really remind me of the other four fragrances I've spoken about, but then when you're wearing it, it starts developing. The vanilla pops even more, and when it combines with the orange blossom or orange flower, it really starts reminding me of the other ones. But then again, again, it's not identical. It's a little different. The oud adds a different layer. It gets a little woody, but in the end, it smells great. So that is EB Florals uh, Orange Oud Orange Flower. I don't know if you guys know this brand. Let me know. Let me know if you know any of these fragrances and let me know if you've compared them all together and have you tried Cintra yet. I'm going to mention one more fragrance. It's from the house of Parle Moi de Parfum and it's a fragrance called Guimauve de Noel. I don't own it. I've smelled it and it definitely fits in this uh, genre of uh, orange blossom or orange flower or neroli with uh, the vanillic sweet marshmallow notes. I find that to be perfectly fitting in this, uh, you know, topic, but I don't own the fragrance. Let me know if you guys own it. I don't know if you guys like this style of combining these notes together. Let me know if you're fans of it. And if there are other fragrances out there, let me know so I can check them out. But out of all the fragrances I've discussed to you to, with you today, which is your favorite? And uh, have you sampled Sintry yet? Do you like this idea? Do you like this fragrance? And what do you think of the bottle? Let me know what you think. Uh, let, let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. I do have a link to Twisted Lily for this. You, I'll have it in the info box. You can click on it and you can go check it out there. But that's all for my video today. Just wanted to highlight uh, all the fragrances that are similar to Sintra. And I'm really, really loving and digging Memo Paris' Sintra, by the way, as I said, if I didn't say it again. Again, this house really does impress me with some of their fragrances. Recently, Winter Palace was awesome. It's a great tea scent. Ocean Leather was also great. And I also love their Tiger's Nest. And then Sintra also doesn't disappoint. Very, very really really good quality fragrances just a little overpriced i think but in the end you're getting really great quality and great smells does that make sense to you guys anyway those are my thoughts on memo paris's sintra and also my thoughts on killian's love apes de la florida orangere's neroli blanc intense batito de ali from profumum roma eb florals oud orange flower and finally parle de parfums Guy mauve de noel if you have any questions or comments please list below otherwise please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon. Soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.